This should have been simple. Swap 10 panels and one inverter, like for like, but there's a big problem and it's turned into a complete nightmare. Let me explain. First challenge, birds. And not the kind of birds that nest under the panels, but swifts. When the client contacted us and we did a site visit, we noticed some lonely swifts nests in the eaves right under where the panels sit. Swifts are migratory birds that arrive in the UK every year during summer to nest and lay their eggs. They usually return to the same nest every year. I knew that this would create a challenge. The reason being, we would have to raise scaffolding up around the building, which would block the birds' access to their nests. So we needed to get all the roof work done before 1st of May when the swifts would start to arrive. The clock was ticking. Apart from the swifts, everything else looked pretty straightforward. You've got 10 of these old panels. They're about 200 watt. Um, so we're going to be taking all of these off. And I've done the measurements the other day. The same width will fit seven new panels on, which are about 400 watt. They're slightly wider and a bit taller. Swap the inverter for a new hybrid one with battery storage, and Bob's your uncle, a new working solar PV system. Oh, it's all falling to bits. So this old Fronius inverter has packed up. This is installed up in the loft. So what we're doing, stripping it all out ready because we're going to be fitting a Libby downstairs. The DC cables have all got plugs on, so I just unplugged them. They're still live, so we'll leave them to one side. I'm just going to start stripping all this out and I'll get the cable down to the new position. We plan to reuse the existing roof rails to fix the panels too, so that no alterations to the roof would be needed. However, when we got the scaffolding up on the roof and we saw what the existing fixing system was like, we had a bit of a shock. This is what we found. Rather than using proper rails and clamps, the existing panels had been lashed onto the roof with some unistrut. They drilled straight through the roof tiles and then with some threaded rod and angle brackets and uni strut on the inside, they bolted the rail to the joists underneath. Could we really justify fitting brand new panels but using the existing clamps and rail? It felt like a bit of a bodge job. MCS rules require that all parts of the system are MCS approved. And as far as I know, this old heap of metal just isn't compliant. So what do we do now? Well, I guess we'll just have to remove the old roof fixings and install new ones. Shouldn't be too much hassle, right? A simple day's work for a roofer, except there's another problem. Asbestos. These old imitation slates are almost certainly made of asbestos. And in case you don't know, asbestos can be pretty deadly. It's fine if undisturbed, but you don't want to go cutting into it and creating dust. So what should we do? At this point, I'm tempted to cancel the whole job, put the old panels back and just leave. But first, we need to prove whether these roof tiles really do contain asbestos or not. Well, so my name's Warren, I'm from Cambridgeshire Advanced Cleaning. So we're just doing some asbestos testing on this, these roof tiles today, uh, just to check if there's any asbestos in them. So we'll send it to the lab and then hopefully get the results tomorrow. Yeah. It feels like it's bonded, so just over there. So what we'll do is wet that down, just so when we cut it, Yeah, can you see the fibres? So there's little tiny little hairs. So while we waited for the results, Lee worked on getting the cable route sorted. So I've just peeled the carpet back, fuse boards below, and you've got this boxing in. You've actually got this strip along which has been screwed back down. It must have been a while ago because it's got all these panned screws. I'm going to take all this up, pull that floorboard up and hopefully I can get my two four mils and my data cable down to the board. And it's just a case of taking one that way to the Libby, one that way to where the zappy is going to go. So while Lee cracks on with the cable route, I just wanted to give a massive shout out to our new Pringles for Life channel members. We've had a lot of signups lately, so I just wanted to give a massive thanks to Rick Midland Spark, Ina Orn Einerson, Tom King, Stephanie Higginbottom, Solar Skirt, Neil Hibbert, Daniel Schauer, Ethan Webb, and Jamie Ryan. 
Massive thanks to you guys for supporting the channel. We really, really appreciate it. And if you aren't a channel member yet, let me tell you for a moment what you're missing out on. Channel members support our channel in an amazing way and in return they get huge value back in the form of extra content and videos. We've already got 20 exclusive members only videos that we've posted on the channel. A lot of it is me vlogging my week so that you can see how I run my business behind the scenes. So if you're interested in that, which I appreciate not everyone will be, but if you wanna go a little bit more of a deep dive into Artisan Electrics and how we do things, then signing up as a member is something that will really benefit you. Not only that though, we have exclusive members only giveaways where every month we give away some amazing tools or products that'll be of use for electricians or other tradespeople. And we do that in the Discord. So we have a Discord server, it's free to join, everyone can join. But in that Discord server, we've got a special members only section. There's not that many people who enter. So if you wanna win some cool stuff, like we're just giving away five pairs of tickets to Fully Charged Live, for example, for our members only, head over to that. And you can sign up, pay a month, and then just cancel again if you want to. But if you're still not convinced, here's a quick montage of what you're missing out on. Oh, this is exciting. Good morning, people. It's Monday. It's Tuesday. It's six o'clock in the morning. What day is it? I have no idea. Look, he's just been. It's proving to be a bit of a nightmare. You've got to be able to go to work on Monday. It's like a time warp. And suddenly a mic from residual current appears. We've got another four panels going on. Good Jordan choice. will not stay for a drink with myself. I make some nice. different circles. Maximilian. <sighs> It's so cold! So annoying. We're doing the shout out for you guys, okay? This is it, guys. I've finally sold out. Heading to the pub. No R1 and R2. Ah, uh, I know, I know. <laughs> You're right there, Reuben. Just spent 28 grand on a van. And I'll see you on my next vlog. Bye. So sign up now and join the artisan movement. Now let's get back to Lee and the cable run. Oh, that's interesting. I thought that was the board. Found down there. I thought that was the boxing in. You can see where all the cables go down this side and this side, down to the fuse board. And there's a bit of a gap and it feels hollow downstairs. What I'm gonna do is get some rods out of the van, try a rod down to the fuse board. I'll set the drums up here, pull the cables down to the fuse board. And then once they're there, I can pull that cupboard back together. And it's just a case of getting them to where they need to be up here. A few hours later, we had our results. Fantastic! The roof didn't contain asbestos after all, but there was still one more problem to solve. Replacing the bodged rails and installing a proper mounting system was going to involve more work than we'd originally planned for. So, I had to have an awkward conversation with the homeowner to see what he wanted to do. Thankfully, he was very understanding and just wanted a proper job done no matter what the cost. So we cracked on and got an amazing job done for the customer. Right, so this morning I started trying to get these rails off with a socket set and you can't really get in there, it doesn't fit. So I've just resulted to the grinder, just grind it off with a stud. Yep, you ready? <laughs> Enjoying the sunshine at least. A little bit of UK sunshine keeps everybody happy. I'm used to fishing knots with wire, not rope. Okay. <laughs> Should be the same principle. Exactly. Put a suction on it. Let's see what it feels like. 21 kg, that's what it feels like. Wayne ate 21 kg for breakfast. <laughs> uh, sorry, I feel a bit rude. I didn't introduce you. This is Wayne and he works in the office and he's actually given me a hand today. So welcome, Wayne. Thanks for the introduction. Appreciate it. Well, you want to do a retake? Yeah, retake, <laughs> retake. Oh, here we go. All right, so I, I feel rude. I didn't introduce you to Wayne. This is Wayne from the office. He's given me a hand today. Nice to meet and you. And he's also taking half of my wage. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Cut that from the video. <laughs> we hold it roughly where we think looks good. What about there? That looks fine to me. Two tiles there, two yeah. tiles either way. So what now then? We could carry on with a car charger cable. Maybe if one person's starting to get that through, someone could be clipping the DC cables in the loft ready. Okay, so the EV Ultra cable that's feeding the Zappi is gonna to be too hard to feed through here. So what we're gonna do instead is use twin and earth four mil. That's why we're drilling these holes here now. And we're also gonna drill another hole for the data cable. Then eventually we're gonna feed along here, rod it underneath, and then send it outside and then terminate it into a whisker box. It's at that point then we'll use the EV Ultra to go to the EV charger in the garage. Uh, I'll leave that there and then when the all the cables are at your end okay. we can pull them through to here and then that means we can get the SDS drill okay. and drill out Alex. and then when Did they're outside nice. we can just put them in a box. Okay. If you so could far. pull 12 extra meters on top of that. Yeah so 12 from that wall we'll okay. get to the garage and okay. should be alright with 10 to be honest. Mm, I think so. 5, 6, 9, okay. shoulder, 11, mm -hmm. So that's 12. So I'm just gonna get the DC cables roughly laid out with the right lengths. So then I can push through and clip inside to the inverter. And then these can be tied along the rail tomorrow when the rail's on. Wayne's just having his 10 hour lunch. Um, I'll just clip in a DC cable through the loft and then what we'll do when we've got the inverter, we'll come up and we'll stick some DC stickers on here just so people know it's live when, um, even when the isolators are off, obviously these cables will be live when there's sun outside. So we'll label it all up and um, it's all ready on the roof then for tomorrow for when the roofers turn up and we do the rails. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Definitely like hanging out the terminal. I'm gonna turn it off at the board. Explain yourself, Wayne. There he is. He's been sitting in a van doing maths. Yeah, <laughs> interviews and admin discussion. So my conscience wouldn't allow me not to leave you guys these biscuits. So this is take a bicky, take a bicky. Oh, you're yeah. too kind. Put them on the windowsill, we'll, yeah. okay. we'll munch them. Nice one. Well, I'll go just do a tiny little pilot hole to see where it comes out Let's and then let me know and then I'll open it up. Okay. Go on. Okay. Go gently now. Go gently. Any luck? Okay. Well, I'm just, uh, nothing's come through yet. Got about half. Oh, got about how much for you? Where is it? No, what? Look, come from oh, this yeah. side. Come it from this. I mean, there's like one. 20 foot of it sticking out. That's. <laughs> it's look at that. It's right in the bush. Um, <laughs> I was like, I've got loads for you. Oh, I had all that through, and you was like, no, I can't see it, mate. <laughs> Go on, keep going. A bit more. Okay, that's that one. And then now just the thick black one. Okay, pulling that now. Gonna be quite a bit on this because it's going to the garage. Right, so that's the only one going to the garage direct. The other two are being re-terminated in an external whisker box, correct? Yep. Good. And then just add some coil cable. Although actually, one thing I didn't think of is the CT cable's longer, isn't it? Actually, this can be cut right down, can't it? That's, that can be because, just cut, it's only going to be connected so into much, the wall. You only need so much, you see, this one has to go all the way through, I'll get my cut, you can, there's tape if you want to call yeah, that one. I'll grab my cutters for the other one. All right, so that's us done for today. We're just going to start packing up. So thanks to Wayne for giving me a hand today. He's going to be back in the office tomorrow. So me and Max will be back with the roofers and hopefully the weather stays clear and we'll get all the rails on. 
Right, so it's the next morning. I'm on my own at the moment, just waiting for the roofers. So when they get here, I'll show them up on the roof where we want the rails. And then I'm gonna try to concentrate down here. My aim is to get the trunking up and across and then all the isolators and surge protection and stuff fitted, just ready. I'll just show you what I'm doing down here. This is the surge protection device for the DC cables and I'm just laying it out. So got that in the middle, got these two Wago DIN rail connectors either side and then we've got these little bridging connectors. So they'll push in, in between them two. And what we can do is we can bring our DC cable into one, back out to the inverter, and then we can have one linking across into the surge device. That side will have either negative or positive and vice versa with the other side. You might notice I did screw up a bit. I started cutting out the bottom because I see the sticker and I thought that was the top, but that's actually the top. Someone stuck the sticker on upside down. So um, yeah, just thought I'd be honest, but luckily that still fits inside there. That'll still go on. I've just hidden a little, little upside down logo with an artisan sticker, but get that on the wall. And next time I do it, I'll just remember the higher side goes at the top. Right, so I'm just laying out, this is gonna be the DC isolator. We've got the AC isolator, and then we're gonna have a few spur for the Libby controller. And luckily the Libby controller will just fit in this gap here when that arrives and then obviously the Libby and the battery is all going to be below. To use the other ladder. So basically the roof is here now and these uni struts are braced between the joists in the loft and they've got a stud going straight through the tile. Basically it's all bolted together so I'm gonna go along this side, take all the nuts off so the roofer on the other side can just pull the studs out and then we can start fresh and start finding where we want to get the hooks. This is where I need Reuben isn't it? Is it going through both of them? So there's the first rafter. Just make sure it's okay, yeah. Is that right? Should be, yeah. Only because it's going to have 300 volts going through it. If we put the end of the panel there, or even there. I'm pretty works. sure that's where it was, yeah, roughly. Okay. And then if we have to put one on there. Yeah, okay. Yeah, does that make sense? We're just getting some of the tiles off, sussing out where the joists are and where we want to put the roof hooks and the spacing. It's pretty much taken up. I think when I measured, the old panels come to about there and it might come a little bit short. But one thing we have got to be careful of, we've got solar skirt going around this. So it might be best for us to put the first panel on that end, work our way so we've got a bigger gap this side because if we can get a bit of solar skirt up and just have to cut around that top corner, that'll be ideal. Plan now, I'm gonna let him do all the work and I'll go go have a cup of tea. <laughs> I've just cut down my DC cables. I've got them marked one and two, same as what's on the roof. What I want to do is I want to get this end connected into the DC isolator before any of the roof works is done. With Solar Edge, each panel would send, I'm pretty sure it's like one volt, so we'd only have seven volts here if all the panels was on the roof. Because we're not using that, if all the panels were connected, you'd have nearly 300 volts here, so you wanna get these terminated away first and then go do the work on your roof. So you haven't got to touch these again because as long as it's daylight, you're gonna be getting voltage through these. So I'm gonna get them away get my AC cables up and into the isolator and fuse spur and then that's sort of all ready for next time then. Okay, so this is the old cable that used to feed the old inverter in the loft. That's still in the fuse board. So I'm gonna 
make that a radial, that's going to be doing the fuse spur and the Libby controller is going to go here. We run a new 4mm up, that's doing the AC isolator for the Libby battery. We've got a surge protection device here and then we've got the DC cables which go up onto the roof. Okay, so I've got the trunking up. Over here we've got a DC isolator. The negative comes through and goes through a single breakout switch. The positive comes through and it goes through a double breakout. So you can see it comes up, it switches through this one. Then there's a link and it switches again before it goes away. I have got to identify these with some red tape or sleeving, but I've not got that on me today. So tomorrow I'll bring that back and do that. And as far as I'm aware, the reason for the double breakaway is there's less chance of it arcing when you turn it on and off. Then we come over to the DC surge protection. You can see I've got my negative in. I've left the space ready to, so that will have the negative out to the inverter. And then these are linked across and we've got one coming up to our surge protection device. Same with the positive on this side. And then we've got an earth which comes down and I've come off the AC isolator for that. This is the AC isolator for the battery and the fuse connection unit for the controller which will go here when it all arrives. So we've got the new Vandervolk rail on the roof now. The new roof hooks are fixed through into the joists. The roof repairs have been done to block up the holes, replace the tiles where there were holes drilled through for the previous roof fixings, and we're nearly ready to get the panels on. So this is it the finished product. It was a bit of a headache, but we got there in the end. Seven 415 watt Trina all black panels, a massive improvement from the previous output of those old inefficient panels. Roof repairs done, all new rails, roof hooks, and everything prepared downstairs, ready for the My Energy Libby inverter and battery storage system to go in in about a month's time. Hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you have, make sure you like and subscribe. And why not grab a cup of tea and watch another video because if you click up here, you'll find a video that explains 10 things you need to know before getting solar panels installed. And if you click the video here, you'll find another video that explains how to size a domestic battery storage system. But either way, thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one.